I'm back in the air, heading towards the airfield about 40 kilometers out. I'll pick up the RWR and countermeasures on upcoming missions. Let me just concentrate on getting through this and getting to some more weapons first. But L1 is the landing airfield. If I were just wanting to go directly there, you know, say I'm just set up on a regular navigation point, I just select L right here. L1's the primary, L2 is the secondary. And you can designate other secondary backup airfields or just do them on the fly as you go. And we have a kneeboard page with all the information on that. You're right here with all the airfields, all the codes to put in. And that's, yeah, a little beyond the scope of what I want to get into here because I just want to do a TILS approach and landing. And the TILS system is a little more involved than your normal ILS that we have in other aircraft. It, and here we go. Let me start on this description again. Here's a better example right here so we just start out here away from the field we go to the landing nav mode right here on the mode selector dial and it's going to guide us to this point right here lb just on a circle about 20 30 kilometers away from the airfield and then it guides us in to a point and this is going to be lf about 10 kilometers out and then it takes us down on the glide slope to the landing waypoint it's actually very very simple it has a lot of information here in the description but Really what it comes down to is you just fly the indications of the HUD, just like you're navigating normally. We are going to have indications for glide slope and just uh, azimuth, left, right, right here in the ADI. Follow the indications down and you're all set. We're going to be using the auto throttle to control our airspeed and to control AOA on descent. I want to give that a shot this time, although you could fly this any way that you, that you really want to. We'll look at indications that we get in the radar and how to get there as we go. Yeah, it's a lot of detailed information here that boils down to just follow the follow the stuff on the HUD and the ADI. So let me just run through the checklist on this. So set landing base as destination. L1 is the destination. Set QFE pressure on altimeters. So let's get that set up. QFE for Mozdoc 995.2. And we'll just go around. If I can find the dial. Yeah, there it is. Okay, 995.2, now the altimeter is going to read zero at the airfield, and that's also going to help out when it comes to the range estimations and when it gets you onto the glide path. So that is set. Next up is going to be select runway heading, and we can cycle between the runways. Now, if we go to, with the landing airfield selected, the BANA setting, we can see that our airfield, or the runway that we're set up on is runway 08. So it's 82.7 degrees, and the TILS channel that it has input is 17. So with this selector in A, it's going to automatically be on the right channel for us, or we could just manually select channel 17 using this dial. If we wanted to switch runways, we would press, I think, yeah, right there, just to press the L button, it switches between 08 and 26. And we'll just take the runway 08, since that's the active runway on that airfield. Okay, that's set. Set master mode to landing nav about 30 kilometers away from the destination. I'll get that here in a bit. Set auto throttle on if desired. Verify autopilot spec is illuminated on. Follow steering commands on the HUD and ADI. If you're using TILS to land, I'll check the TILS light. I believe it's going to be over here is on and illuminated. Check artificial horizon. Looks good to me. Lower landing gear about 15 kilometers out. Set HUD reflector glass down at about that time, or any time. Check TILS is still solid on approach. Follow steering. I'll get on the glide slope and start to descend about 10 kilometers out. And uh, follow, yeah, just follow the guidance. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's all I'll really do here. Now, let me get the HUD glass, lest I forget it. Now, other things I want to go auto throttle on. Now, this is going to automatically set me with the gear up to 550 kilometers per hour. Now I'm just going to come back around to the right and start to fly in the direction of the landing airfield. And once I go to landing nav, I'm going to start to get the TILS directions thrown at me in the HUD and the ADI. So since I actually just fired this up and started recording right away, let me just take a break here and look around the cockpit and see if there's anything else I need to configure since it's an air start. I'll be right back. Okay, coming up on the airfield, I'll just roll out right there, heading straight at the airfield location at 30 kilometers. I don't think it really matters where we do this, but I'm going to go to landing nav. 
Okay, there we go. I have B or LB1 as the the steer point right now, so that should yeah, it takes us around to the left right there. And I'll watch the needle in the ADI and the direction on the HUD. And this is set up as well. I was looking at some diagrams here. I'll pull it up and I hope I don't get bogged down in this and not see stuff that I need to worry about in the cockpit, but the circle that is going to take us around. Yeah, right there. This circle that we're going to fly around. Okay, yeah. See what I mean? I just missed the turn. That's okay. Let me finish this thought real quick. The circle that is going to take us around, guidance in there, it just happens to be exactly the circle or the ground track that we would get using the attitude hold mode at 550 kilometers per hour. So this is going to be just completely, uh, totally, yeah, completely autopilot directed until we get onto the a final approach. Okay, I'm not getting ADI. Let me... Okay, there we go. HUD, Slave, SI. Okay, and as I did that, I switched, and that was not associated with the switch there. I went to LF. Now we're coming around that circle, and somewhere out here should be the airfield. And I'm actually going to descend to start following this needle right now, telling me to go down on the uh, ADI. Okay, there we go, coming around now at about 15 kilometers. I'll roll it out right there. And I'll continue to descend. Okay, LF1, so that means that in the grand scheme of things, we are right about here. We're uh, coming up on the 10 kilometer point, so we're right here in this approach. Okay, actually, field inside. Okay, let me let me go around. I think I've got to pay more attention to the... Yeah, I've definitely got to pay more attention to the altitude right there. Let me go around. I'll set up on this again. Now, to recycle, uh, what I need to do is go nav, then back to landing nav. And that's going to take us back around to that LB, that initial point. And actually, if I wanted to, I was reading, I could... If I just wanted to take it from right here, go to landing PO, and then back to nav... Now I'm on that LF point. So LB is the point further out. LF is the point closer in. So let me just recycle back to nav and back to landing nav. And then I'll come back and shoot that one more time. I think I've got that now. I just started from a, a higher altitude than I should have. And I believe it's going to be 500 meters that we're shooting for just throughout all of this. I'll be back in just a bit. Okay, so coming around, set up on this one more time. I just went to the landing nav master mode. Now I'm guiding on LB1, that point about 20 kilometers out that's going to guide us around on the circle. Okay, there we go. I was watching for this too. I don't think I picked it up last time. We have a circle depicted right here. That's the circle that is going to guide us around. And then once it comes into view, we're going to have the runway heading displayed for us there as well. So 20 kilometers out. And yeah, I'm just going to keep it coming on around here. Following the guidance, I'm down to... Yeah, I'm at about 930 meters, and with it an altitude hold, if I want to descend, I'll just trim hat, uh, just nose down with the trim hat, and that'll set me a new reference altitude a little lower as I come around here. Okay, I think it's about to roll me out. Okay, there we go. And again, just flying with the trim hat and the autopilot. And once I get to this point, we're going to watch it automatically step from LB to LF, and that's going to take me around here. Yeah, there's the runway heading right there. There's the LF. Right-hand turn, just following the HUD. And I'm just going to keep coming down. 780. And in this phase, yeah, I believe it is 500 meters. Okay, there's the airfield. And there's the runway center line right there depicted for us. Perfect. Okay, coming, I can see the needle centering up in the ADI, and there it is in the HUD. Got it. Now I'm going to continue to descend, going for 500 meters, and we are at about 12 kilometers. Let me go gear down before I forget the basics here. Okay, gear coming down. And here, okay, okay here we go. I'm going to level out right there. Okay, close enough. 480. I'll take it a little bit low. That's just fine. Right-hand turn to get me onto the center line. Yeah, I missed something right there. I think I was, yeah, I think I was a little bit distracted on the guidance. I think I rolled out too soon. I don't think the guidance take me around was 
done, but this should fix me right up here. Okay, so, okay, it's taking me down now. Actually, this is, yeah, let me just fly this thing manually. Okay, auto throttle is in. It's going to keep me at 12 degrees AOA no matter what. So really, all I'm doing is just turning the thing and rolling it out where I need it. And then just aft stick to get back onto glide slope when I need it. Let me manipulate the trim. Okay, so I need to come around just following the guidance left now. I've got to remember too, this is going to be about 3 degrees offset to the right. So we're going to have to make a right hand, in this case, turn. To really get lined up. Okay, coming down a little high, a little above glide slope, that's fine. Here, Here's the outer marker right here. So we know we're on the right track. And there's another AOA indication right there on the velocity vector coming down. And it's going to, I think it levels out once we're at 12, the desired AOA. Okay, I think I've got the either the inner marker of the runway. I feel like I'm I feel like I'm missing something here. I feel like it's just I'm trying to follow the needle right there. I don't think that's telling me what I think it's telling me. Okay, although here we go. We're we're looking better now. Now I just need to fly it visually on in. Yeah, I think I'm I, I'm definitely too low. I'm tempted to go around right now and try that one more time, but I'll take this. There's plenty of time to figure this out. Okay, it's holding me in there about 15 degrees. I'll, I'll worry about that later. Let me just worry about flying the aircraft right now and getting her down in one piece. Okay, so it's going to be touchdown and then just track, track down the runway. Okay, here we go. We're looking better now. Okay, so... Touchdown. Nose down. Auto thr or, uh, thrust reverser. Okay, I can hear it engage. Just gentle rudder inputs to get me stopped or get me on track. Okay, throttle back gently to idle, thrust reverser off. That was that was okay. I mean, I think uh, maybe I just missed something when it came to the guidance right there that it was giving me with the needle. It was definitely, I felt that it was taking me down uh, too low there at the very end. Uh, granted, there is going to be a point where you're just supposed to take over visually, and I have, I think I might have overdone the fog effect a little bit here. I wanted a little bit, but this was, was kind of ridiculous on the approach. Now, let me go ahead and go through the shutdown, or actually the after landing checklist here. Master mode selection, BER, landing lights as desired. Okay, master mode, let's go to BER, right there, and landing lights as desired. And I'll fiddle with that here a little later. And then right-hand turn back up to our parking location. Yeah, that's right where we started from, right there. Okay, on the brakes, I'm just going to take it off the runway here to the right. And I'll pull the checklist back up to see if there's anything else we were supposed to catch. I think it just stepped me straight to the after landing, or actually the shutdown procedure. Now, let me get it straightened out. Checklist, yeah, shutdown procedure, ejection seat. A throttle lever off. Uh, actually, I could probably get auto throttle right now. Generator off, avionics and other system off, oxygen off, low pressure fuel valve off, canopy open, main power off. Yeah, let me do that. Let me get auto throttle back off right now. Okay, I've reset the thrust reverser. It was. Uh, it told me. Did it not say generator and then avionics? It did. That's. I don't doubt that that's the the procedure in the real aircraft. That's just. It did. By way of thinking, it's usual to shut down individual systems first, rather than killing the generator power like that, just so that you're using the actual switches and removing power from systems that way. Just killing the generator is just going to just sort of brute force kill everything, but I'll, I'll look around the cockpit and start to kill systems once I get recovered here. I think I can make this turn. In fact, I should have no problem at all. We'll see how much nosewheel steering authority we get here. Oh yeah, if I just keep the uh, keep the throttle up, that comes right on around, doesn't it? Oh, that's that's actually a very very tight turn. It's actually probably a little too tight. I really wouldn't do this because right now I'm just sort of pivoting on that right main uh, main wheel, and that would cause a lot of wear and tear. So you would never want to like pivot like that. And usually the nose wheel doesn't cast her far enough to do that anyway. So yeah, I'll take that as good. Now shut down the procedure we had. Let me just go around the cockpit. I'll start to 
to sort of turn stuff off here in sequence. Okay, radar confirmed off. Back to zero on the AS. Okay, all this I can leave as is. Master mode is back to the start position. Radio doesn't really have a power switch, does it? It's just sort of, just sort of there. Okay, coming on around. SPAC. Disengage off. Okay, hey, there's the. I never pointed that out, but there's the TILS light that we were supposed to be looking for all that time. Now this starts or started the mission in ID and R. I'm going to put it back there. Okay, our radar altimeter off, and I'm of course going to get the master cautions as we go here. Okay, all this stuff I believe is in its it's where it started at least, so I won't touch any of that. Doesn't matter where I put any of this stuff. IFF off. RWR off. Lighting I never touched. And okay, for now we'll take that as good. Okay, generator. Okay, there goes the main power. And it told me, it told me low pressure fuel pump or fuel valve. It never really told me to go uh, throttle to cutoff, did it? Okay, I'll, I'll do it in that order anyway. Okay, fuel valve shuts off fuel flow to the engine. I'll go ahead and get the throttle to cutoff anyway. That's not going to hurt anything. It's actually probably ideal. I'll just go main power off. Okay, I'll call that a good shutdown for now. I never did get the canopy. Okay, that still runs off of battery power. And no battery switch in the cockpit, but that's all done from the ground. There's a panel that the, the crew chief would get. So, okay, let's go ahead and get out of the aircraft. So, I don't think there's anything else to go over here. That was actually a pretty good mission as far as getting everything done that I wanted to get. I'm going to move straight into some different weapons with a different mission setup. And we'll just see where that takes us, so I'll be right back.